My company is called xwebinar.nl and my name is Francisca Frenks. I started in 2008 with my company in the Netherlands and what I'm doing is the following. I'm helping organizations with webinars, online training, virtual classrooms and so on. I help the orga these organizations with uh, developing engaging programs, but also I give technical support, technical services and training. I work for 90% online and I'm a bad learner myself and I'm getting bored very fast. So I was searching for something to learn in a fast and entertaining or engaging way because my customers are like me. I'm aware of the fact that other people learn in another way. Then I discovered the Open Network Learning website and I saw that this was a learning experiment on problem-based learning. It was not a video, it was not a boring webinar, not a diffuse slide share, but a do-it-yourself, try this as home learning experiment. And that was intriguing me, so I joined the course. It was a way to collaborate online in an engaging and affecting way. And this was developed by some Swedish and South African universities. I was really impressed by the results. And I was so motivated and engaged, I learned so much in a happy way. I joined three times this project. And every time it was more interesting. Uh, traditional education often uses models and structures for developing smart courses. And PBL learning is the opposite. You give freedom and the opportunity to inquire to students. And then you learn. I think this way of learning refers more to the natural way of learning. And when you have to learn a life long, then you have to learn easy in a natural way, I think. Uh, once I did a PBL in a training of myself, and uh, that was for Section, that was a university for applied sciences. And it was a little bit frightened for me the first time because you don't have a structure. You can't control the process exactly. Uh, we have to share experiences in that session. And someone was leading the session and I suggested some rules to the other participants and a certain structure to work. Everyone had a task and they agreed and they started right away. It was so dynamic. We had the rule that when the discussion was more than five minutes, the group decides if the discussion was going on or be stopped. So it was very engaging and they talk, talk, talk. And when five minutes was finished, then they choose are we going on or not. So they choose how they use the time for themselves, how they use this available time. And the result was that everyone was very satisfied and just judged this session as the most valuable of the course. That was the result of PBL, do it yourself. In my vision, education and labor market are so not so well connected. Uh, labor market organizations are using PBL since long, but they don't appoint it as PBL. In labor market, the focus is always on goals, on targets, on gaining money, on happy customers, on innovation or something else. Only in organizations like Google and Facebook, they acknowledge the power of playing around for innovation. Uh, governmental organizations and private sector always have problems to solve or challenges uh, or certain goals. With PBL, you learn how to work in a virtual team. And for me as an entrepreneur, it's very difficult to find good people because there is not a course for this kind of work I do. There is not a course at all. You can't learn it any, anywhere. Um, I'm searching for people who can ask questions, who are independent thinkers, who can collaborate, who can make the best of diversity and differences, who are not afraid of... Um, of different perspectives, people who are not walking behind others. And I had once a trainer who could only make 
training material in the way she learned it at the university. And she was using a lot of models, but common sense was not used and couldn't work with her. There is a difference between the skills of the tutor or the facilitator and the participants or the students. I will speak about the skills for the participants. The audio. That's the most important thing when you work online. A proper headset is needed if you want to be he heard. This is the most important thing if you work online. When others get a headache of you, they don't like you and they don't want to listen to you. So that's the first thing. Then the second is cleaning up your computer, downloading Java, delete cookies and that kind of things, just uh, the household of working online. And then manage your online work in folders in your browser, make a timeline, an agenda for individual or group work, make a plan or whatever. So the managing, managing a part is very important too. Then uh, learn that contribution is an investment for effectivity. Contribution, so to join, to participate, to say something, to do something in the group, that is an investment for effectivity. So if you're not doing that and just listen and wait and do nothing, then nothing is happening. That's common sense. If you read some documents first or you look at some videos and you think about what you already know about the topic, then the collaborative session, the online session together, will be inter interesting for you and you have something to contribute. It is not the literature or the knowledge what you have to contribute, but it is you who decides what is interesting in a certain context to contribute. And that makes you unique and valuable uh, in the group. And the group can't, can't miss you, therefore. Uh, another skill is learn how to select information when you're preparing topic. Always think about what your, your goal is, your uh, routing, what you want. Uh, with the group, of course, but it is important that you think for yourself what is interesting and what not. So that's information literacy. Um, learn how to prepare a scenario if you are working with a scenario or learn to prepare a question if you are working with a question. That's um, easy to say but difficult to do. Learn to listen also. Listening without having all these things in your head. Listening in what others say. Learn to formulate the right sort of questions. Learn to be personal in a professional way. Learn to be vulnerable and if you have lack of knowledge, it's no problem. Learn to be you and to contribute. Uh, don't judge other persons. That's also a skill on behavior or sayings uh, without questioning and understanding them in an empathic way because don't be too fast everyone in a group is valuable but in a different way so try to find the ways people collaborate the best and sometimes other people need some help sometimes you have to ask for help that's a skill asking for help learn to be flexible uh, that's what i said Learn to be academic in an empathic and human way. So if you are a student uh, at a university, you work in a certain way, but you have to be empathic and use common sense and be a human and not only a researcher. So try uh, something else. Learn to work with presentation tools, with management tools, with uh, group facilitation tools. Uh, learn to use it in a way it uh, is important for the topic. Learn to work with um, Scrum or Human Dynamics or whatever methods there are to getting things done. That's an important skill if you want to want to be effective. Uh, learn how to blog for reflection on your own learning and learn to read very fast and put it into the context. You can read a lot of things, but 
put it also in the context you have in your thoughts. Blog about it so that you get the picture of how it is. And uh, these are the skills I think that are the most uh, important for PBL. And I hope you will invest in PBL because it's worth it, I assume. And you learn it in this course of uh, Open Network Learning. Thank you.